Thank you, Mr. Wright. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to have all of you here today. Uh, looks like we have a pretty good turnout. If uh, anyone wishes to address the commissioner's court, uh, we have a time we can do so uh, immediately after we do the Pledge of Allegiance, or if you'd rather, you can have something to say during the course of the meeting as we go through the agenda. <clears throat> we do not have an extremely long agenda today, so hopefully we can proceed on through it. All right, uh, roll call. Uh, Mr. Yower is not here today. Mr. Rosales is here. Mr. Dubnik? Here, sir. Mr. Schindel? Here. And I'm Richard Butler, the county judge, and I'm here as well. Let's open with a prayer. <coughs> Father, we come to you today as servants of you and servants of Carnes County and the citizens that live here. Help us to fulfill our roles and our obligations to both uh, in the way that you would have us to. We ask that we be forgiving in our nature, tolerant of each other's views, and willing to listen. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Do we have anyone uh, that wants to be heard, a citizen that wants to be heard before we begin the regular meeting? All right. Uh, let's have a reading of the minutes.
Cardinal said, being so long, we have a lot of minutes. Anyway, uh, anybody have any comments on me? I just <coughs> I'd like to see the minutes posted to the website. And was, uh, I think we're supposed to be doing that anyway. And I'll, I don't know if we've been doing some of it, but I think we need to get these posted back on the website as we're supposed to. Carol, any problem? Okay. <coughs> well, listen. Next time, let's see, is Daily's not here yet, so we'll postpone that. We'll get back to number eight later. Number nine, what about that? Pardon me, seven. Discuss, approve, disprove a resolution to move the Carnage County Commission Court meeting is scheduled on September 30, 2014, at 9 a.m. to September 26, 2014. Uh, at 9 a.m. and I offered that. Uh, we're going to have a hearing. The Commissioner Court will be meeting on the 26th in any event uh, to uh, approve budget and tax rate. And I think uh, rather than trying to get the Commissioner's Court together so many various times during the month, we have several other hearings uh, that this would be better. We'll have better attendance for do it this way. Anybody have any objections to yeah, I'll move that we pass this resolution that we move the last of the month date for the Commissioner Court regular meeting to September 26th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll post that notice for everybody, but there will be uh, like a single here in Georgia in the month, and that will be on the 26th. Number eight is the one we're going to wait on. Number nine, discuss and acknowledge that Brenda Yonsek has met the SB 546 continuing education requirements for our tax assessor collectors for 2014. Is Brenda here? She's not here today. But I have her reports. Well, we just heard her report. But just to, I mean, oh, that's just acknowledging that she's, she's met her training hours. I think she's we have to do those acknowledgements in your packets. Okay. All right, there's no action required. Yes, we acknowledge it. We acknowledge it. All right. Number 10, discuss, approve, disapprove, receipt, and open <coughs> bids and award of CR 277 grade replacement project. Uh, Mike. These are the two bids, I'll take it. Uh, you know, two bids? Yeah. Yes, those are the only two. All right. We have one from Liska Construction Company. It is 9, 9, 14, 8, 45 a.m.
Judge, if you would let us take the bids and go review them right quick, we can come back in. Okay. That's all right. Thank you. 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 Thank
Well, <clears throat> discuss, approve, disapprove the resolution of support Proposition 1, the constitutional amendment to increase funding for public roadways presented at the Texas Association of Counties Conference. Shelby? Uh, count at the <coughs> conference recently, the uh, TAC is, they had a lot of discussion on Proposition 1. Proposition 1 is going to be the uh, uh, re uh, resolution of, in, what they do is they're the, the oil and gas taxes collected wrongly have been all going to the, they get to a certain level and they all go to the rainy day fund. Proposition one is going to do is going to take just put 1.4 billion into the rainy day fund and the rest would go to support roads and, and uh, bridges and other type of transportation infrastructure needs in, in the state. Um, the state's saying that, well, everybody's recognizing that the, that the state is having a bad transportation issue. Uh, TxDOT is trying to fund, and some of this money will be, hopefully, they'll use it to uh, use the say to work into the, in the oil field industry, as well as some of the uh, major cities. This goes back from to 1987, and then when it was created, or 88 rather, but it was based on 1987 collection, so all the money was going to the rainy day fund. And uh, I think the Senator Nelson is the one that's pushing this. Uh, it's, they just asked to get the county support this, and we, if we do support it, to send a copy to the Transportation Committee as well as the tag. I think in view of the state of our roads here, it's sort of like the. Uh, and it's another way. Our department has the money, but we're going to have to work. Uh, this, this is just that one way to work to make sure they allocate the proper amount and to the roads in this area. And this is another way of trying to fund the uh, infrastructure for roads without having a, as they say, a major tax increase for the state. Any other discussion? I'll make a motion to approve the resolution. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Discuss and acknowledge the proclamation of the month of September is Hunger Action Month in Carnes County, Texas. Uh, I received an email from Stephanie Smith. She's our uh, food bank. I guess our liaison with the San Antonio Food Bank. And uh, she sent me this email, it's where September is, is Hunger Action Month, uh, I guess throughout the state of Texas. And uh, I, she asked if we could pass a resolution supporting them. Uh, with her guidance and, and uh, Megan's guidance, we've created a food uh, committee Food Policy Committee, and we've got the Wesley nurses on on board now. We got our Kaiser on board, and uh, we're trying to to uh, meet the nutrition needs of the, of the county. And uh, we had a food bank yesterday. The, uh, I want to thank the uh, show board for letting us use their facility. And by the way, that will be the main facility we use from now on. We'll be at the showgrounds for all food dis disposition. Uh, yesterday, I think we had 175 cars or something like that. And each car had, they averaged two, some had three. So we passed out a lot of food yesterday. So with that, I'd like to, did you want to read this? Sure. I'll be probably going to Okay, it says, whereas Feeding America is the nation's leading domestic hunger relief organization with a mission to feed advocate, and advocate for America's hungry through the nationwide network of member food banks, whereas the San Antonio Food Bank is a member of Feeding America and provides food and grocery products to more than 500 partner agencies in 16 counties to include Carnes County and with uh, Texas A&M Agriculture Life Extension Service. Whereas both food, San Antonio Food Bank and Feeding America seek to engage citizens locally, statewide, and state to fight and end hunger. And whereas San Antonio Food Bank is 
through their distribution partner services over 58,000 individuals in need of need every week and whereas food bank across the state of Texas including San Antonio Food Bank will promote numerous events throughout the month of September to bring awareness and attention to encourage involvement in efforts to end hunger in their local communities. Uh, therefore, uh, Richard, I, Richard Butler, County Judge of Corners County, Texas, do hereby declare the month of September 2014 to be Hunger Action Month in Corners County and hereby encourage citizens of Corners County to make a difference through participating in the efforts in to end hunger. Stephanie, you want to say anything or Maggie? Maggie can we uh, take a photo with you guys so we can post it to Facebook? Yep. Let us pass the resolution first. I'm sorry? <laughs> Let us pass the resolution first. Oh, let's do first. that, definitely. Right. Yeah, so. uh, I move that we pass the resolution. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye
and that's what this change order does is it takes those some of these um, the testing's already been paid for and some of the structural plans have been paid for but some of the extensions have not been but this is the full extent of what it will end up costing any questions uh, i'm looking at your project cost recap out of may you have a dispatch tower for 126 thousand even though you've got it in the uh, the actual construction cost of today is working in place, less retained. Does that additional tire funds that the county has for the for, for 225000 part of that also or not? The, the, the $225,000 is in addition to the $126,000. $126,000 was for a 198 foot tower, which is what the um, <laughs> Mr. Sherman and the FAA had um, thought you would have at the jail. So that's what was budgeted in the project. After the project already started, there was discussions about going to the 300 foot tower and the need for that. And um, and the additional cost in order to do that is, is budgeted at another 225,000. That is something that we are um, bidding out for the tower and we'll know the exact cost shortly. But the 126 plus the 225 is the anticipated cost of the 300 foot tower with its um, associated equipment. I know we have a bunch of money this year we put in to get capital expenditures to move stuff over to the jail and short life kitchen or what do we call it that but the startup costs for the, for the jail. Now, is there going to be, I mean, your bedding and all that, is that included in this cost? It's in the jail construction cost. It is? Yes. Um, inmate uniforms, indigent care, the their um, mops, brooms, floor polishers, TVs. So when they walk in, it's all set to go? It's set and ready to go. Anything that um, was changed or modified during the year as far as adding some more phones and stations for the DPS, et cetera. That's what we went, we worked with the Sheriff's Department to make sure in this new budget, anything that was not anticipated when the jail was originally designed and was added or changed, that's what they put in their, um, in their budget for next year. And the total original cost for the jail was 9.824 million? Nine, that is your construction cost, construction yes sir, cost. with Hale Mills, 9.8. And the additional site planning and everything else, but you know, jail, uh, it's going to end up running right now eleven million four hundred twenty-eight thousand. That's your total project cost with our hazardous material abatement. We still have um, one hundred thirty-one thousand in there to continue abating the project, and there, you know, there is still some money that, if, you're, if it's not spent, it'll be returned back to the county. But that is your total overall project budget from the very start of inception, starting with the geotech report, the surveys that were done, and all of that all the way through. And the um, uh, construction costs will pretty much be on budget? Yes, sir. And we have not spent any of our contingency um, as, of, as of now. So we have, there's a couple things that, um, that it looks like will be small items that we'll be taking out of contingency, adding a shelf for the microwave, some minor things, but right now we have not. We have a $50,000 construction contingency that is um, the majority of that. It looks like it will be going back to the back to the county at this time. Bruce, you have come. Sir, the budget for this jail is $11 million. We're already, I understand that we're 11, almost 11.5. Is that correct? Your total project cost with your tower is at 11.428938. That's adding up everything fees, that's everything for the project. That's not your construction cost. Okay, let's keep this simple. What's the total cost of the deal going to be? We keep, you know, we keep getting, you know, wrapped around the axle. I want, a, I want a number that says this deal is going to cost us X number of dollars. 11.428 million that and that is where it has been the tower was added at 225,000 when they went to the 55 foot tower that has been since september of 2013. so it should That's not exceed that cost no sir should not exceed that cost unless somebody changes something 
Right. When did it get to that cost? September of 2013 is when this um, is when that budget was approved by commissioners. Well, and I know it was approved by them, and I know that you say they voted on it, but the, the voters of the, the county voted on a $7 million bond, and we never have gotten a clarification of how the jail went from 7 to 11, how we ended up with an extra $4 million for a 48-bed jail. And I know my particular commissioner says he's, he's asking. He doesn't know how it got there. I don't have a specific answer for it, and that's the way I understand some of that took place. First of all, the $7 million bond issue, I wasn't on the court, and I don't know what the anticipation was. I don't know whether the court <coughs> proposed that bond issue to be the full construction cost, or simply that's how much money the county wants to borrow pay for the construction of the jail. I, I don't know what the initial project estimate was or anything else. I do know that, <clears throat> for me, some of the issues that have been encountered uh, were site-related issues. Uh, this site turned out to have, I guess you'd say, less than ideal soil conditions and subsoil conditions as well as contamination uh, from its previous use as a, basically a mill, I guess it was orange gin or something there. And uh, you know, I don't know if it was a bad site to use, I have no idea, but I, I think it did result in substantial additional project costs. Now Lorraine, if you've got any other <coughs> things to add to that about, about the jail costs. I don't know what the initial contract was. I don't know where this perception is, is that, that a lot of people have had is that this is supposed to be a seven million dollar project and it turned into an eleven and a half million dollar project. And uh, do you have any explanation for that other than what I've stated? The primary is, there were two primary factors. One is the, the site, which was huge. And when, when we got the geotech back and we knew the extent of the hazards and we knew the geotech, I mean, we brought that to the court and we said our options are move the jail to a different site or we need to budget more money for this. And at the time, the court decided we're going to budget more money and, and move forward and keep it at the site. The, the is there other, a redesign required by the site? In other words, are you find the site's got certain limitations or deficiencies. What had to be done in response to that that cost more money? We had to go to um, the select fill, was going to be eight feet of select fill to do excavation and bring in new imported fill for the slab on gray or to go with the piers. And since the piers were close to the same amount of the cost, they were, I want to say 200000 I'm going from memory, more. Your peer foundation gives you a guaranteed almost like 0% movement where your potential vertical rise on any slab on grade, you're designing to like a half an inch movement. So taking a almost guaranteed zero uh, inches of movement over the life of the facility over the potential um, half inch movement for 200,000 was a very good value added well, decision well, that was made. Was 200,000 the only amount added to the contract? That, that was only the cost to add the piers. <coughs> the overall cost of doing the slab on grade and the piers, let me back up. The choice was either to do a slab on grade, which was the cost of impact of the site was almost a million dollars when you added up everything that we had to do with the slope and the, the bad soils. To do piers <coughs> was let's say if we're going to do even numbers, 1.2 million. And I'm going from years ago. So what I was trying to say is the additional, the peers did cost another 200,000, but the impact of the bad site was almost a million dollars. And that was brought before the court. You also had your hazardous remediation. Um, and then we also had the impact of, of the market down here. The jail came in, the bids came in higher than anybody anticipated. And we got four bids. They were all within, I want to say, 2% of each other. So they were good bids, 
They were good, solid contractors. It's where the market was on the jail. Uh, so, <coughs> and what were those contract amounts? Nine point seven million. They were. They went from um, nine point seven up to, I want to say ten point two. You know, right around that, right around that range. The other thing is, is we added in the. You know the dispatch tower. I mean, we have three hundred and thirty-six thousand dollars in there for a dispatch tower. There's all of your furnishings and fixtures. There's um, telephone and networking, cabling, the phone system, all of the furniture, uh, all of a full kitchen. Your kitchen's designed and it's installed with equipment to feed ninety-six beds. Um, your laundry is designed for 96 beds. His choice was to make all of the support areas designed for the 96 beds. So all you have to do is add on your other 48 beds when that when that time does come. Because the biggest cost when you do additions to a jail is your, your cost inside your facility disrupting and working in the secure perimeter. So designing those support spaces for the future 48 was a decision that was made. So and wherever the commissioner thought that led them to pass the seven million dollar bond issue to complete this project, I, I don't know. But those of you who are on the commissioner court at the time, I said it might have a memory of that's how much we think it's going to take, or if it's some other reason. Uh, it has all been to 11 point whatever million, and that, and you've given me basically the reason why. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Or you just got a comment? Yes, sir. How we came up to seven million, seven point two, seven point three million dollars at the at the time, then Sheriff Jalaka and PER, we. Commission Court decided we're going, to, we're going to do a jail. They went to, I believe it was uh, Johnson City. They had just completed a 48 bed facility. Turnkey, done. They went up there and visited the chair. That jail cost, I guess, Johnson County, whatever that county is up there. They, uh, and they told me it cost was $6.12 million. They came back with a report, this is what we need. Everybody decided, well, we'll add another million dollars in there <coughs> to make sure we cover any cost overruns. That's how we got to the 7.7 .7 or whatever it is bond that was voted on by the, by the uh, right. Carnes County. Uh, however, I don't believe, and I know it was not reported in the newspaper, I, did, I never heard the 9.2 or 3 or whatever it is increased by the commission court until yesterday. Uh, I, I never did find that particular uh, agenda item in the records. And the next thing, but the next thing, I mean, the only thing I heard was, and a lot of other people is it went from seven point something to 11 point something. And, you know, it was a total surprise. How did it happen? It's been asked on a number of occasions in the court and a satisfactory answer has never been provided. We're not trying to stop the jail, it's already down the road, but I think there are some explanations that are due to the people of the county as to how do we get from seven point something to 11 point something, and it was never made public. Well, I think it, it had to at least be made public in the budget process. I know the budget process was subject, last year was subject to open meetings, I know people were attending those things. I wasn't there, I can't tell you, but I would presume, if somebody wants to correct me, I can, but I would presume that the amount of money being budgeted for the jail to complete the project was discussed and was approved by the commissioner's court. We wouldn't be able to spend the money if it hadn't been done. Uh, whether should have been or could have been uh, some separate hearing to uh, approve a different amount of the contract. I have no idea, but I do know this: that the jail is near is under construction. It 
supposed to be finished this year. We committed the funds to do it. Uh, we don't have any choice but to put complete the facility as is. I mean, equip it and be the worst of ideas to simply say, well, we're not going to finish it. And I know that's not what you're suggesting, Reese, uh, but that's uh, the first time management of an issue like that in the future, a future construction issue. Hopefully, we'll learn from this experience and then go forward on any further contracts with more clarity, more explanation, and uh, be able to produce more. Look, for all I know, there's no way you could have gotten this jail built for less than 11.4 million, built and equipped for less than 11.4 million dollars. I have, uh, you know, the, the contractor situation down here, I think is extremely difficult to deal with. I think it can be very difficult to get people to do jobs and what they charge and presume they can charge because the uh, competitive nature of the market down here may be somewhat responsible. But I, I think what we have to do at this point in time is get this deductive change order is go far with it, sign it, and let's all learn a lesson about how we can better handle contracts we can in the future. All agreed to that? Yes, sir. The only the first time that the public became aware of the jail going from seven to something from two to eleven point something was after the, during the budget process last year. That was the first notification. When if, and it may well be eleven point something million dollars is what it's the cost what it would have cost or what should have been budgeted rather than seven. And I'm not arguing that. We don't have a best estimate. That we didn't even have a best estimate. But my point is, there has not been, in my view, full disclosure by the county and or by the architect that this is what it's going to cost me to make public. And so that if, if nothing else, the public knows, or perhaps we should have gone out with another bond issue just like we did the first one. I don't know that, but it, you know, it's too late to go down that road. I don't think we need to borrow that money. Uh, I, I wouldn't think it'd be viable. I, I think our county needs to not borrow money unless we absolutely have to. And uh, so I wouldn't have wanted to propose a larger bond issue on it. Seven million dollars worth is substantial as it is. Uh, anyway, I'll make a motion that we approve of this uh, change order of the contract. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. for this new jail, okay? What kind of guarantee do we have when things start going wrong 
like in this building, roof leaking, air conditioner not working, what kind of guarantee is, are we going to have that we're not going to be spending buku other bucks to get stuff fixed after paying $11 million for the jail? And the, basically, the same as any other com commercial construction contract, uh, the contractors warrant Free freedom from defects for a certain period of time. I believe it's one year, and that's a standard contract with warranty. Items placed in the jail, such as appliances, air conditioning units, things like that, may or may not have additional warranty periods on them. You know, it depends on the manufacturer, it depends on the selection of products, and things like that. But uh, those are things that uh, we can discuss uh, with Ms. Daly and we can review. Uh, but, but for the most part, that is set in the initial contract document, your warranty period and what is and is not warranty. Uh, even if it's not under a warranty, there are, there are uh, avenues available for people who have, or, or entities that have construction done that turns out to be defective, you can establish it, uh, breach certain implied warranties, or that it was done in a negative manner, it's conceivable you can, through a lawsuit, make a recovery against a group like that. Uh, you know, it, that's the case every time anybody has anything built. You know, if you're subject to the contractor doing a good job, the subcontractors will work on it, and you're subject to certain legal avenues that are available to you as the owner of the project. And so uh, we'll monitor the, the building as it ages, and hopefully it will be, be constructed well and we won't have those issues. If it doesn't, we'll probably have about the same avenues available to us that any any commercial person would or any other governmental entity would that had a construction project done. Well, we kind of, it sounds like we kind of got hung out to dry on this building and the air conditioning in the juvenile building. It just, it just keeps, seems to be going on and on and on. So I've, I've done construction litigation in the past and it's not unusual it's unfortunate but it's not unusual for large commercial projects or large uh, municipal projects to have issues come up and uh, you always hope they come up during the warranty period so you can force the contractor to take care of it but that's uh, that goes into the, hopefully, you know, when you submit contracts out for bid, you know, as a public entity, you have to take certain bidders, you know, and uh, you don't get to say, well, I know this will do a better job or whatever, and, and you know, employ them. So we're, we're somewhat limited. Okay. Where should I give you better news? That goes for every contract that any governmental entity gets built. You know, there. The contract under certain limited, certain strictures, certain requirements. But we'll be watching. I hope it, <laughs> hope it turned out to be a, a good piece of construction work. And the sheriff will be monitoring it and reporting to us if problems arise. And I'm sure the sheriff knows that these warranty periods are limited and he'll be reporting those problems as soon as they come up. All right? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tax collector's report. Where was I? I'm in the bridge department. The bridge, Mike, you and David are ready to report on the bids. Have we reviewed them? Everything looks all in order. Uh, we evaluated both prices. Mm, 
we got list of, uh, list of construction came in at $75,495.73. And uh, tropical contracting LLC, they came in at $233,753.06. We reviewed everything and we're going to go ahead and award it to this construction. Any idea why we had the extreme disparity in bids? One's reasonable and one's complimentary. That's the explanation. Yeah, one don't want to come down. Okay. Well, I'm, I move we accept the bid of Lister construction. I'll second it. On favor? Aye. When will they start? We will have a we'll, start. We'll get the uh, paperwork together. They have 10 days to enter into a contract. We'll see okay. if we can get it done a little faster than that. And then we'll get them started. Sounds great. Right. Thank you. Any comments? Huh? Would you like to comment? Yes, sir. You know, uh, y'all have working days on there. Uh, a lot has to do with availability of concrete and uh, the precast because they have to do uh, shop drawings for the precast. So there's a delay start on that. The shop drawing people, they have to make a set of drawings and send us for approval. So there's a little delay in starting, just for y'all's information. All right, thanks, Donna. I don't think we're going to tell you the report. Brenda was unable to be here this morning and she asked that I give her report based on the August 2014 general fund MNO collections current month to date $35,047.28 year to date $9,661,104.56 for a 98.81% collection. Delinquent for the MO month to date, $2,189.61. Delinquent year to date, $60,074.51 for a collection percentage of 30.86%. For the INS, current month to date, $4,666.35. Current year to date, $1,293,817.83. Collection rate, 98.82%. The delinquent month to date for INS is $94.93. Delinquent year to date, $2,624.98. A collection rate of 22.9%. Countywide Road and Bridge Special, current month to date, $7,979.64. Current year to date, $2,205,406.66. Collection rate, 98.82. Delinquent month to date for the Road and Bridge Special, $448.70. Delinquent year to date, $13,483.41, a collection rate of 40.75. For the rural fire, current month to date, $3,881.45. Current year to date, $1,065,670.62 for a 98.81% collection rate. Delinquent month to date for rural fire, $234.42. Delinquent year to date, $7,114.86. Collection rate of 42.2%. All right. Thank you. Now we have number 15 to discuss, approve, disapprove, August Treasurer's Report. Good morning. I believe everyone has my report. Yes, sir. It looks like the middle of the packet where it says Ferns County Debt Obligations. You'll notice that we paid off, oh, I'm sorry, excuse me, paid on uh, some debt obligations in August. 
One is on this building, and the other one is on the gel and rope bond also. Are those scheduled payments? Yes, sir. Or some of them are principal and interest, and some of them are just the interest only. We do it in February and in August. And if you'll turn to the next page where it says DWS Scudder, August 2014, you'll notice that the jail facility bond and the road bond now have a zero balance. We have reimbursed the general fund and the road and bridge fund with those dollars that were in there. We've never moved any of the monies out of there, out of the original $7 million and the $1 million that was in there. Which and page is this on this one? It's got so that's why there's a zero balance in there on that. So the zero balance you're saying money was moved from jail bond money and road and bridge bond money was moved from a fund, one fund to something else? To the general fund within this DWS scatter. But it had been happening, we were paying, and Milana will correct me if I'm wrong, uh, we've been paying the jail bills and the road and bridge bond just through the regular general fund itself. And so when we got down to a certain point, her and I discussed it, that the money basically was gone. We already spent the seven million and the one million so we reimbursed the general fund, and instead of putting it back in the bank, we just reinvested it back into the general fund and the road and bridge fund. The road and bridge bond in 2013 had a million two hundred thousand and thirty-nine cents in it, and that's what you moved out. Correct. And then you took it. I mean, and then the. The balance of the jail bond was one thousand one hundred fifty-six dollars. Well, it was like five million something. Okay, I guess it's each of Anything you want to address? Anything else you want to say? Well, y'all did get a little note of interest. And if you have any questions on that, I'd be happy to answer. The only thing that I want to read on this is uh, this Friday is Julie's last day. The proposed budget shows no raises for her position, which, by the way, it has also been, it's always been told to me by the officer that it's the position, not the person in which salary should be based. So if you think the landfill operator should get paid $13.45 an hour to the position of Deputy County Treasurer's $11.55, even the maintenance man will get paid $12.77 an hour. Now sit there and try and tell me the person wasn't a factor in the decision on that salary. Sounds like discrimination to me. So she is quitting as of this Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Right. I'm sorry, the motion to approve. Sorry. Whatever. I'll make the motion to approve. No item number 15, I've presented. I would like to approve it the same way we did last time. That's fine. Subject to the results of the audit. If you'll change that and then I'll sign it, sir. That's fine. All right. All in favor of that? Uh, Okay, I will. Uh, I will. Uh, 
Quick progress point. We're going to go right ahead. Volunteer Fire Department for the Jaws of Life Maintenance. In that same category, you will also notice a payment to Alonzo, Bar of Cease, Irvine, and Palmer CPAs for $9,909. That is for the accounting services on the bank reconciliations for fiscal year 2013. Those are services through August 15, 2014. Well, that is is that for normal auditing services or will that for the accounting services we employed them for to try to figure out what was wrong with Correct, that's record? for the additional, the ancillary costs. Okay. Uh, on page two, capital outlay, the annex parking lot, $375.50, Swartz welding and construction, $5,200, that's for the handicapped handrails on the west end of this building. $391 uh, to TSI Laboratories monitoring the courthouse movement and $201,802.93 on the jail facility. There's progress pending to the contract? Yes. All other items are of normal activity. Total for this cycle is $340,999.11. Discussion. Yep. I'll make a motion with me. I'll second it. All in favor? That's 
for her is that like signal increment. Can I turn this off? She brought her recording here as well. Judge Stewart's office, the number of cases filed in her court was 220. Uh, the amount retained by the county is 30,6980. Uh, total remitted to the state is 15,369.50. Her total revenue collected is 45,439.30. For Judge Kurzekwa, number of new cases filed, 127. Total retained by the county, 16,577.85. Total related to the state, 24,550.75. Total revenue collected, 41,108.60. For my court, number of new cases filed, 166. Total retained by the county, 21,019.24. Total remitted to the state, 9,724.31. Total revenue collected, 30,743.55. And for Judge Sotelo, a uh, number of new cases filed, 54. Total retained by the county, 6,719.73. Total remitted to the state, 3,897.45. Total revenue collected ten thousand six hundred and seventeen eighteen. Do you know firm? Okay. Special projects. I've got this. It's uh, from the. Floodplain Division, we took in 5,052. Engineer got 1,800, and total portion of the for the county was 3,252. And the Cornish County Special Projects with the permits, uh, we took in 2,900. And uh, 1080 for inspector. TCEQ's portion got 70. And the county's portion was 1750 That was for special projects. All right. <coughs> Sheriff's Department. <coughs> Morning. Uh, for the month of August, uh, monthly reports of calls and citations of warrants to the sheriff's office of the assault. We had 23 uh, burglaries, it was 19. Uh, civil standbys, 12. Uh, 
criminal mischief is 11, criminal trespass 6, disturbance is 38, escorts 14, uh, leaves livestock 37, uh, prisoner transports 74, uh, speak to an officer 29, request for an officer 226, road hazard 56, suspicious activity 24, suspicious subject slash vehicles 36, 28 thefts, uh, 21 warrant services, uh, 16 welfare checks, uh, 145, 145 arrests, uh, 315 warnings, uh, 287 citations, 660 traffic stops. And then on, uh, on the second sheet is the population. Go ahead and get thefts going up. In some areas they are. How y'all solving? How y'all As far as uh, usually when we have that, uh, we get an investigator to make the location also where the deputy makes a call. But I mean, are y'all having success? On some area, some we are, yes sir. No, some we are. Question. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Let's go to item number eighteen. Road report from Road and Bridge Property. Uh, our 1747 is uh, in the process. We're at 60, 65%. We've got to do a technical investigation and then uh, the field survey. Um, County Road 199. We've gotten the survey taken care of. We're at 35% on that one. And on 182, again, we've got the survey and then uh, we're working on the geotechnical report. And uh, then we're at 35% on 182. Mike, what do you mean by we're at 35%? Yeah, what we're doing is we're testing the soil, surveying everything, making sure we know what we've got, where we're going, what our ditches. And uh, we're shooting for a 24-foot roadway is what we're looking at on there. So what we're doing is we're testing all the soil for it. And when I mean these percentages you're reciting, what do that mean? When you say we're at 35%? Yeah, 35% of getting everything set, ready to go for construction. Okay. So you're talking about percent? Yeah, the preparation part. Being ready to work the job. Yeah, yeah, we're not preparation. No, 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 no. Uh, Mike, y'all are looking at 326. That's the first one you're going to start on. That's kind of a give me. We were looking at the bridge <coughs> part of it. What, what we'll do is we'll see how the bridge part of it comes out. But we did approve getting the bridge inside. We'll see how the bidding process actually goes on that. By I'd rather not have the bridge construction and the road going at the same time. That way it'll really complicate everything in the area. That's the hazard. So I'd rather move it to another road to start off. Like we could start at 182, 199, wherever the traffic is really bad. So far, 199 is the worst road out here. It's like 326. So if my preference is to probably start there if they start the bridge. It all depends. I just don't want them both crowding each other. So we are going to widen that bridge out. Are you and David thinking about maybe, maybe like on 326, or say do a mile, see how it holds up? Can we do the home road? Are you going to do the home road? We were going to go ahead and do the home road. Yes. And you don't think it's just, just like doing, say, from with the 791 all the way to, to that one county road that cuts across back to 72. You know, that's where all the traffic is coming off that planet. Oh, you're talking about 331? Yeah, 331. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. What we're doing is we're going to have an out. And a lot of it's going to depend on which way we go. Whether we're going to go with concrete, y'all through concrete, or if we go with limestone and, and uh, two core seal coat on top of it. It depends on which way we're going to go, but we're going to give y'all prices on both of them and see what y'all's decision would be. Because when y'all get to this point, 
also remember we have that committee, that transportation, uh, that sea turtles committee, or whatever they call that group. We yeah. have to get yeah. them involved and, and, and you know, let them know what you're doing so we can, you know, look at yeah. their recommendations as well, or, or just how that's supposed to work. I can't remember. I think everybody meets and kind of oversees what they've got because I think it's, uh, what is it, two residents, oil companies. The, uh, the advisory pounds. committee is really is really for the uh, the sea trails, uh, not so much for the TIF funds. But it, it was it, TERS was required in order to get the TIF money. So since these projects are, are TIF funded, they don't really have anything to do with that. But you can ask them questions about these roads if you'd like. To. Well, I think the sea trails committee the advisory committee needs to be. Yeah, so it'd be a good time to start thinking about getting them involved and just get their feeling for stuff. That's right. I just want to remind you about that committee. I believe the main thing to remember there is that the, the commissioners, you men, determine how this money spent. It's not him and it's not him. It's you, you actually determine it. And, and you're, you're the ones that come up with the final say of how it's spent. That's why we're going to give you both ways. We're going to give you concrete, we're going to give you limestone. Y'all make y'all's decisions. And we can use one as a, as a test run and use the other one as limestone, or how y'all want to do it? I might want to visit with your neighboring counties because DeWitt County and Mr. Underbrake might know this has a test plot right now on a road outside of Nordheim with a geofluid yep. product Shape, shape on road. Nordheim yes. road. And it's with the Tessar product. And Tessar is a company you all should Google Tessar and look at the products they're putting out there and what they're doing. Yeah, and, really and DeWitt yeah. County has a trial road right now and you can you can yes. communicate with them and see what their trial road is. And see they went and cored it and everything and they come out pretty good on that. So we've been we've been watching that road. I've been getting with ABN I think is a contractor that did it. We've been getting with them and touching base They actually had down. someone from Iowa State University come out and work with them on that. <laughs> And that's why we said we're looking at that, and then we've got some roads that uh, are in uh, Victoria that they've done, and they've got some actual companies that did their whole parking lot, and they parked that, that line to it's the what do they call that? Oh, where the wire line inside? They've got their whole pad, what is eight inches, and that thing's been holding the broker, and they got trucks like you wouldn't believe over there. We, the roads will obviously have to be analyzed because, I mean. Surely they've been analyzed to be put into the project, but you know you may not be able to. You may have to require some roads require certain material that's going to stand a higher traffic rate than other roads could exactly. simply have a chip seal that doesn't require the expense of a geo grid material. Yeah, well, geo grid saves you six inches, is what the ten star said. It saves you six inches of limestone. Right, but you're saying all the roads don't require the same right. prescription. Exactly. Exactly. Some roads don't have plane, any truck traffic on them, and some have a lot of truck traffic. Right. right. And you need right. to, you know, not just. But what blanket. works though is 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 my theory on that is you want to kind of treat them all the same because you don't know what's going to happen next week, and they might pop a couple of rigs out there, and we've got a lot of them that we have no traffic on right now, but in the TxDOT survey is showing that they're going to produce oil, and that's uh, I'm trying to remember really wrong. I can't remember right offhand. But anyway, uh, it doesn't show no traffic right now, no signs. But they say in the next 20 years, it's supposed to have probably about three or four wells on it. So if, if we don't plan for it, and these trucks start going over there, which we won't know, it's going to tear the road up. And then the first thing going to happen is say, damn, Mike, we don't know how to build a road. What it is, is my theory is build them all the same, so this way they're all going to withstand the same load and everything. Well, I can say that might be in your reports. Is there any way to generate the, or to show the cost for the road that you spend on the road? Can you generate the report from your uh, yeah, we, tractor? Yeah, we, we have a. Do you have assigned cost to each category? Yes, yeah, yes. We have it. Uh, there's a daily work expense, is what we use. And that one's in there. But you can, I mean, can you show per. Each road. Well, shows. it shows 104 from 81 to 831. 104, we went over there and we did laying on it. I mean, is it, can you, I guess what I'm asking is, 
and you say well, this month on County Road XYZ we spent two hundred dollars or two thousand dollars or whatever. Can you show that when you're closing the court? That's what this is. Right? Okay. Yeah, it shows each road and it shows the expense of the road for the month. What's the bus route? Close the bus route. Bus route. And see, and that's what we've been concentrating on here since school started. We've been out there concentrating all on the bus routes, in which that took us off a lot of the other routes. But uh, yeah, we're getting a pretty good list of complaints on the bus routes. So. Is the 104 road you just referred to? Is that the one that you just put the material on? Did you did you no. just said you, you bladed? 104. We bladed it. I mean, that's all. Put a ton of material right. on it, not the one. I didn't well, yeah, get that last month. I didn't get that last month. I guess my question is well, the, mat oh, okay. the, the material. Are you, are you reblading the material you just put down on 104? On oh, 104, we yeah. did uh, Bond Road. Yeah, that was Bond Road. Right. And, and but that was, that was back, already. Now, but now you're back on it blading. Is that what you're saying? We, well, we're doing our routine blade. Really? Yeah. yeah. So, so the, the, the length, the time that they're putting that material down is what? It's, it's less than well, six Well, we never, months? now 104, 104, and there's a lot of these bond roads. All we did was put the material down. We never got to roll it. We never got to do nothing. We were putting it down so we could come back and redo them. And that's where we're at right now. And our main goal was we don't have enough personnel in order to go out there and put flagmen out there and roll and everything. Our main goal was to put the material down and then come back in there and reshape it, water it, open it up, flood it, because if it ain't flooded, it ain't doing no good. So that is the way we have to do it so we can get the bond money spent and, and the material on the, on the roadways. That's why 104, that's just a blading cost. Because our, our blade for every hour it's out there, it cost us to run. Right. 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 But, but, that's but, what but, that is. That's but, the cost. But so you we agree. Need to prevent the blading guys. And see, you got you got to you got to remember, 104 isn't the whole road either. Right. You got 104 from 180, right. from 81 back. But you're in agreement that those the limestone road is not sufficient. It actually needs a, a sealer it on the top of sealer. it to yes. be done properly. Yes. We do that's need that's what I'm getting at. Dust control. But like we redid 330 less than a year ago, and it's already got large washes in it and, and things like that. Right. And if we don't do a seal coat on it. Or chip like seal or some, last, some kind of, yeah. yeah so something on top of the here, limestone. We watch it blow away in the wind right. every or time. Or wash and, away in the rain. Yes. Okay. And that's why I'm pushing real hard to get a chip seal on it. So, <coughs> that way we can get it sealed and not go through all this redoing our work constantly. Do it one time, fix it right, Makes and sense. get out of there. That's Makes what sense. I need. Mean. So, Mike, on your daily report, you have County Road 326 for a total of 45000 plus. Are those costs going to reduce what we have to do out of the 1747 monies? No, this was for dust control and 326. <laughs> Our job goes from 792 to San Antonio River Bridge. That is the 1747. 326 still goes the opposite side from San Antonio River Bridge to Romney. So we still got a lot of that road. 10 miles off. Yeah, it's a long route. Five is figured and five is still in the works. It's 10 miles on that road. Yeah. And most of these uh, 1747 roads, they are five miles long. Most of them are long roads. So try to get those long ones out of the way while we can. Any other questions? Anything else? I have more answers, Mike. Um, I'm not trying to say me, 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 but we have a bus on our road and all of our limestone's laying off in the ditch. We went and mowed it? No, we haven't been mowed. Oh, we mowed it with that brush mower? The, reason the sides of the yeah. road yeah. have not been mowed. Did they get up there with that brush no. mower? No. Okay, I'll look back at it and I'll get with you. Uh, we're in there. That's from that washout from that six inches of mm -hmm. rain we got. And then we had six inches of rungi. And then we had two inches the other night. No, I'm just saying we do have a bus that travels on that road from yeah. 149 back to 181. Okay. Well, we'll get on it. We'll check it, and we'll get out there and get it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
for yes, sir. Is, is uh, Wilton Briefs going to come out with a uh, objective or a, a plan? How many miles of road they're going to build? Actually, build in FY15. I have a five-year plan. Are I presented it to, to Mr. Butler, Jeff Butler, and uh, it's there. Hoping I can follow it too, because in five years. I'll be finished with just about every road in county if I can do it. I'm hoping not. <laughs> I'm hoping. That's a big word over yeah. here. Especially with the oil field. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Website yesterday at 2:33, the county's available balances in non-interest bearing accounts are five million three hundred ninety-eight thousand seven hundred eleven dollars and forty cents. Sales tax receipted August 2014, eight hundred three thousand seven hundred seventy-three dollars and ninety-five cents. Sales tax for the same period last year, eight hundred ninety-six thousand six hundred seven hundred sixty-four dollars and one cent. A decrease of $92,990.06, $53,936.38 in non-receipted items from March and April 2013 has been confirmed by the independent accountants. These funds were duplicate monies from the tax office which were only receipted in the system <coughs> once. The duplicate monies were refunded to the tax office by check, therefore negating the funds receipted. Correcting journal entries were made on August 29th. I've attached those journal entries for you. The reconciliation process by the independent accountants is ongoing with the identification and confirmation of these two non-receipted items. They are hoping that that gets us within the non-material amounts to be able to complete the audit. I talked to Janet yesterday and she is reviewing that. The reimbursement for the legal fees associated with the requested tax abatement for energy transfer still remain outstanding. The reimbursement from the Texas Historical Commission remains outstanding. I have been in contact with Susan Gamage with THC via email and she is checking into the reimbursement. She is not sure that they have received the closeout documents necessary to be able to issue that final payment. I wonder if that's due to the fact that they have not completed the readings. We're still monitoring the movement. I'm not sure if that has anything to do with the West Walton. I don't know. Okay. But she said it could be because of the transition between Mark Callan leaving the commission and yeah. it got lost in the shuffle, but she is checking. All right. That fifty-three thousand nine thirty-six. Now that was part of the money that was um, not received. Yes, couldn't find or something. That had not previously been received. Yes. Now we're waiting to hear from the independent author whether they <coughs> through their efforts have been able to close the gap between the discrepancies in the the treasurer's 
records and the bank statements? Correct. And they're, I'm, we've got to get somewhere under $10,000 in difference to be able to approve, give us an audit report that doesn't list that as a material problem. Correct. But have we also charged them to go ahead and try to get to zero? Yes. Okay. Yes, that was the we're initial not, We don't want to just stop, well, it's only $10,000. Right. We want to have it get where there's nothing. Correct. Oh, okay. And like I said, with this identification and confirmation of this 53 plus thousand, they should be able to complete the audit, but Janet was verifying those numbers. I gave her that information yesterday. All right. Any other questions? Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. All right. EMS, Mr. Kelly. Thank you, sir. Okay, for the month of August, uh, we had 133 dispatch requests. Um, did a total of 95 patient transports. Uh, had uh, 31 refusals, five uh, canceled calls. Um, uh, we, we had five uh, calls where we had uh, both units on scene. Um, used the backup unit a uh, total of 22 times. Uh, had uh, two air evacuations, five out of county transports, um, and one fire uh, standby. Uh, our uh, collections to our Medicare total this month was uh, $6,876.77. Uh, our commercial insurance was $10,799.13 for the month. I'm, I'm working on those. I know you'd asked me last time to put them together, but I want to make sure that I got them 100%. I don't want to come in here and spout off a number that's that, that's not correct. Uh, one of the one of the reasons is is because of the the old Medicare that we added to this. I want to be able to make sure I've got all that separated. What are your uh, patient calls here today? Uh, patient calls year to date, uh, we are at a thousand thousand seventy one for the year. So, uh, Mr. Kelly, do you think the next time we have a meeting, you can come in with a branch of the budget meeting that we have one? You can come in with some kind of a graphic <coughs> chart that yes. will show the level of calls you know, through the years, you know, just not through the years. So over the past 18 months, and I got to show if there's any trend, certainly you know, and number of dispatch calls or whatever. So we've got to just look at it and see, sure. uh, is it trending up, is it trending down, is it stabilized, what's it been? Certainly. Okay. I, mean, I could use that information by the 17th because I'm going to be an officer with that in the transportation. Mm -hmm. yeah, as soon as you put that together next time, here, which I assume would be at least on the budget area, that should bring that to it. Certainly. Well, well they're out of county transport, I know a lot of counties don't have any problems. <coughs> and I know y'all have been working with our guys are trying to alleviate some of those issues for them because uh, I forgot the other day they had to fly somebody out because they couldn't get nobody to take somebody for exactly. something that deserved ground transport, not, not air transport. So, how many of those calls are you are y'all seeing more of that lately? Or we're 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 seeing a trend up, but like you say, you know, we've been working with them real hard, trying to trying to eliminate some of that, um, making sure that that we don't take patients there that they're going to get stuck with for six or seven hours. Um, uh, you know, they're they're uh, most of what we've done this month. Uh, we had a few um, a few uh, OB patients. Uh, a few babies trying to be born, and we took to Beeville. Um, uh, had a couple of people right there at the Wilson County line that we took on into uh, to Conley over in, in Floresville. But uh, 
that's one of the big big problems we're facing right now is 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 their time of waiting to to get those patients out. We've been working real hard with them trying to trying to help them solve their problem basically because I mean their problem their problem is our problem. Um, they were supposed to call me yesterday, and I didn't hear from her. I'm going to call her this afternoon. Um, I do know that that the box is made, the unit is on the line. Um, there were some final details that, that they had to call to ask me, uh, basically dealing with the size of the mount for the oxygen bottle, the type of captive's chair, you know, did we want to keep the same or, or things of that nature, but she was supposed to call me yesterday afternoon. She didn't do that, but I'm going to call her today. So it's still anticipated by the end of the month? Yes. Yes. That, that, and I haven't been told otherwise. I, I asked that question a week ago. She said it looks like we're right around the same date. So, so I'll know more today though. And just for your, your FYI and information, that I've had some people call me and they're concerned about the use of the helicopter too much. Uh, that, you know, we have some people that will just, before they get out the door, send the helicopter, don't know what's going on until they get there. Correct. I've been in contact with the prison because they called me one day and said that they had questions about why one was blown out when. Uh, they hadn't even made contact with the patient yet, and all they required was stitches. And they flew him to San Antonio anyway, but he came back. It was, uh, he just had stitches put in his head, and that was it. I know that when they make contact, it usually takes 20 minutes to get inside the unit of uh, prison you know, fast. And, and get out by the time they do all the searching and stuff. But uh, there's a concern that it's just, you know, being abused. With the, Exactly, and, and, and I don't agree, and we're, we're working real hard because we don't want to abuse that. Uh, it's real easy to get in that mode of going, well, it's a head trauma, we need to, we're going to fly him to San Antonio, which I think was the case in this one. Um, and, 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 of course, at the prison, that does pay some. We, we've, we've since got that deal worked out where it seems like we're, you know, we're, we're getting in there a lot faster, and so I think... Part of that was was that he he launched Air Life thinking it's going to take me a while to get in here. Well, Air Life got down here, was looking for a spot to land. We hadn't even got through the Sally Port yet at the prison. Um, but we've we've since corrected that issue, um, and and and, it, and it's it's a learning process. I mean, sometimes things happen you don't think about in EMS, and you so we. Put another rule out there to here's what we're going to do, here's how we're going to handle it. Is the EMS personnel that call for a helicopter? Uh, yes, sir. Generally, when we call, we ask them to put on standby what their ETA is going to be, um, various things. Uh, the weather plays a lot into it. We got to know if they're going to fly, if they're not going to fly. Um, maybe sun's shining down here and they may be socked in over there, but. Uh, but yes, the EMS personnel are the ones that, that call. Okay. Anything else? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Lexington's office. Is that on? Good morning. Good morning. We're diligently working, of course, to, to prepare for the November uh, fourth election, and then uh, also still working on um, cleaning up all of the voter records and things like that. But. I did want to mention one thing to y'all this morning that um, I didn't find out till this morning. I guess I, I've been before y'all a couple of times requesting uh, assistance from regarding the mapping and things like that. And I made an assumption that our 911 coordinator, because she was working with maps, would also work with us. And uh, I got an email this morning that told me that was incorrect. The only thing she's responsible for is the 911. So um, I'm going to look into it, try to figure out what other counties are doing. I had checked with other counties. Most of them, they have the 911 coordinator, and they also do mapping for the county and all of the different 
uh, things that are needed. So anyway, I'm going to just look into it a little more, but that may make some changes to you know what I am requesting for the budget because we've got to get our maps correct, and they're not right right now. And uh, so anyway, it you know it, I just wanted to to mention that to you. I sent an email to you, Judge Butler, and you shall because y'all were the only ones I have an e um, a uh, uh, email address for, but I forwarded what I was sent by the 911 coordinator so you would know where I was coming from. And then also uh, forwarded a, a description of what I need um, as far as what we need for the election. Right. So I just wanted to mention that to y'all. Thank you, Karen. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen, if, if you have something you need to get to all the commissioners and uh, you can always send it there and yeah. get it in their boxes. Okay, so okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the staff's report on county personnel plans. Mm -hmm. Anything to report? <coughs> Shelby, the only thing I've done, I didn't have a chance to talk to you. We are doing the biometric screening sometimes in October. We're doing that again with the vitality program and everything. So. And by, if you, uh, we I know you probably didn't tell you, but we need to incorporate that sick policy into the handbook. I think Don't we have to wait week. until it's, until Carol records it and stamps it, and then we can just okay. make yeah. copies and add that to that. Yes. Thank you. Annex says report peeps on here. Uh, staff report on waste for recycling. Anything to report to the No, everything's on fine. And Commissioner. <coughs> permits. 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 Of permits, right? permits uh, for the month of August, we took in $43,130 for entrance, water lines, and road course. Good. I don't have anything else on the agenda. Okay. Okay. I have something. I'd just like to check on the status of the. Uh, Kind of the code compliance officer, have y'all done anything towards that? I believe that it is in the budget to set up a department. Uh, that will be part of the budget discussion that we have. Uh, I said, we're, we're going to have the, I guess, the official budget hearing on the 22nd, I believe. Well, the 16th is the tax rate, um, Eric the 22nd Kelsey. is the second tax rate and budget hearing. And then the hearing at which we will adopt the tax rate and the budget is on the 26th. There will probably be, at least tangentially, some discussion of budget items when we were discussing the tax rate because budget is what calls for the tax rate. And so we'll have some discussions, I suspect, about all of those things. So is that when the department heads can come up then? Certainly. Okay. Yeah, the, the, the public hearing is available for both the uh, department heads, anybody who feels like they need adjustments in their budgets, come in and make those to the commissioner's court and the public who's in attendance here too. And then the same thing goes for uh, you know, the public. Uh, we're inviting and hope to have a large contingent of people here for the hearing. I'm, I'm hoping it's big enough we have to move across the hall to the, uh, the adjoining to the bigger courtroom. And at the 4.30 or the 9.00 of <coughs> the next week? On the, let's see, I'm day straight. What's the first one? 16th? Okay. That is at 4.30. Okay. But that one's just for the tax rate, right? not necessarily That's tax for the rate department hearing. heads. That's a tax rate hearing. It will probably involve some discussion budget, but it is not the official budget hearing. The uh, we have two tax rate hearings required by statute. That's going to be the 16th and the 22nd. The 22nd is also going to be a day in which we're going to have our budget here. And uh, I think those are so intertwined that it will be, you know, the discussion is really 
about a month. The 22nd hearing is at 9 a.m. Okay. What is the uh, 16th at 4.30? 4.30. And the 26th and is at 9 a.m. The 26th is when the commissioner court will actually adopt the budget and the tax rate. Yes, ma'am. Um, on the 22nd at 9 o'clock is the budget. At, and at 3.30, y'all are showing the tax. Are y'all going to combine them? No, no, no. There's a meeting on the 20, 22nd. Well, yeah. we'll take them up in a particular order. We'll probably see. The tax code, the tax rate hearing has to be held twice. We have to have I two know. vote hearings. So that's 4.30 on the 16th and 9 o'clock on the 22nd. Because in the, in the, in the, on the commissioner, on the county thing, it was showing 3.30 for the tax. I would think that the tax went back to the budget hearing. Is that correct? Because really the budget I, I really have discussed for Posted those. I don't know what I said. I, I thought it was. Well, right. Do you know? The tax is at 4 30. Right. Oh, see. Yeah. I, I thought we were going to have a hearing 4 on the 16th. On the 22nd, it's 9. Okay. On the 22nd, I believe we're addressing two things. And that is budget and tax rate. Well, when I was looking at it, it was at 3.30 on the 22nd. Last week, or Friday, when I was looking at it, it was posted for 3.30 on the 22nd for the tax. And my only question is, is that tax thing now going to be at 9 o'clock the same time as the budget here? Let me double check those notices. I, that's not what I understood it was posted. But I'll, I'll go look at it then. Okay. <laughs> I'm not talking about the 16th, I'm talking about the 22nd. 16th, everybody knows that's yeah. 430 and it's right. only tax rate. The 22nd is the one. The 22nd is at 9 a.m. 9 a.m. I don't believe there's any 330. There was, but maybe it got. There's a 330. There's a public hearing on the stuff apparently on the 16th. A what? Remember, it said. My plan that I have to present, right. you told me to put it at 3.30 okay. before Good. the 4.30. Okay. But, that's, but it has nothing to do with the tax uh, rate. Yeah. What's at 3.30? It's for my archive plan, my annual archive plan. Oh, okay. 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 Okay.